Hi, everybody. Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. We're going to do top 10 pick-me-up fragrances. Also, meaning top 10 perfumes for when you're feeling down, when you have those depressive vibes going on. Not clinical depression, but just, you know, when you're just feeling low. You have the feeling that the whole world is kind of beating up on you constantly over and over and over again. This last week has felt that way to me. I've been through a lot. And so I've been thinking this whole week, okay, so what perfume actually helps me the most to regain some sort of self-value, you know, to regain some sort of happiness again? Just like perfumes that I like to wear or that I like to sniff out of the bottle from when somebody has either bullied me or I've had trouble at work or a ton of bills arrived at once and I have to pay them, or I've read some nasty comments online about me. Perfumes help me feel good again. And sometimes they might not be the solution to the problem, obviously, but they're definitely a big help in terms of offering you some sort of like a like a, like a wooden stick to lean on if you're feeling like a little bit like you're going to fall down emotionally. You know, they help, they support you just that amount to allow you to regain consciousness of yourself again, pull yourself together and keep on walking. You know what I mean? Like the phoenix that you are, raising from the ashes. Sometimes I have the feeling that fragrances create that substrate that allows the ashes to form out of which you, the phoenix, can rise from. So the fragrance is seen as the ashes of the phoenix in many ways in this video. So subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, thumb up this video if you're enjoying it. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Decabal spelled together on Patreon. Thank you to my patrons who have pledged. Uh, this video is being filmed live in front of my patrons and main channel YouTube members. Uh, they get to see the video first. So let me know if you guess any of the pick-me-up, pick-me-upper perfumes uh, in the live chat on the sidebar. But also you guys watching the video later in the comment section down below, share with us the perfumes that help you get yourself out of, you know, a sad situation. If you're feeling low, gloomy, blue, what perfume do you like to smell? My first one is a fragrance that, and I'm going to show it to you in the current formulation. Uh, the first one is a fragrance that I have adored since many, many decades. Uh, some reformulations were better than others. The current reformulation, which is made in France, is okay, in my opinion. Sure, it's not the OG, but I still love it a lot. And it does bring back memories of maybe not the easiest days, and past, but definitely they bring back memories of me as a survivor, me being able to overcome any negative situation uh, in the best of ways possible. And that would be Dolce Gabbana's Purom. Now, I know we've canceled Dolce Gabbana a ton of times. Um... And some people don't like the Made in France, she said, a reformulation. I guess they've reformulated it yet again because uh, I think she said, oh, Prestige let go of the contract with Dolce Gabbana. I don't know who's distributing them as of now, but I stocked up on this when I heard that they were going to part ways. So I bought several bottles. This is 200 milliliter. They're huge. And um, yeah. Yeah, this you see immediately I have a smile on my face. It's been a really tough week for me, but this just makes me so happy. Um brings back good memories, brings back youthful memories. It it um the tobacco accord. It's a it's a very 90s fougere fragrance, right? There's lavender in here, there's tobacco in here, there's a bit of woodsy notes. There it's spicy, but it it's a happy smell. It's a happy smell. Debbie says we don't cancel the past. And Jesus says it's a happy smell. It it it, it brings you to a happy place. Uh, and this is definitely a pick-me-upper type of perfume. Um, sure, it's a chemical concoction. It's not some high-class fragrance. You know what I mean? I mean, 
I got a 200 mil bottle for $50. Like, you know, I don't want to say it's a cheapie, but nowadays, if you're lucky and you keep looking, you can find a really big bottle for, for a good deal. Sorry, I have a green screen in the back. So this kind of becomes transparent. But if I put my hand in front of it, you see it more. It's gorgeous yellow, greenish juice. Love this perfume to bits. I do have the original formulation as well, but I just wanted to share with you uh, the current formula because I love it as well. And I think it's always nicer to show a fragrance that is potentially still available for others to buy as well, or at least to try out. So that would be my number one. Yeah, it's... It does, it really helps. It helps me so much. It makes me feel like, you know what? It's okay. It's all going to be okay. Now, the second one. Mm, let me see. Is definitely categorized as cheapy nowadays. Um, you know. And it's a white floral accord. It is an 80s perfume that is still in production today. Uh, it still has listed oak moss in it, and uh, I love it for it. But also love it for the violet accord, the lilac accord, the, the, the powdery, tuberosy, gardenia-esque type of irisy accord in this one. It's an 80s masterpiece. Liz Claiborne, you guys, this thing is happiness in a bottle. I'm I'm not I'm not joking. I'm not joking when I tell you this is happiness in a bottle. Oh, sunshine in a bottle, lipsticky accord. Oh man, it's just so beautiful. It makes you want to go to the movies and watch a horror flick from the 80s. You know, just some dreamy atmosphere without any worries, without any sorrows. Um or going to the mall, just hanging out at the mall <laughs> one afternoon. And mind you, I'm going to show several fragrances that are on the affordable range in this video. Uh, not just because I love how a lot of these so-called cheapies nowadays smell, but also because, truth be told, I've never been really in favor of fragrances uh being part of luxury. I know that some of them maybe utilize notes and ingredients that are expensive to harvest and to get, but there's a lot of beautiful perfumes out there that don't cost a lot. And since this particular video is centered about around combating, you know, feeling blue, feeling sad, feeling depressed. So this video technically is about happiness and I don't want people to have to spend a lot of money on happiness. That's sad, you know? So yes, there's going to be a couple of perfumes in this selection that are more costly, but most of them, and I've really thought about this a long time, you know, the perfumes that really make me happy, not necessarily do I have to spray them on my skin, sometimes just sniffing them out of the bottle. Like the perfumes that make me very happy are not very expensive. So, and I thought... That's a beautiful thing. It made me happy just thinking about it, thinking that, hey, you know what? Um, there is a possibility of smelling beautiful perfumes uh, that don't cost an arm and a leg. You know, I, you know, you can find Liz Claiborne for $15, $12 even sometimes, you know. Beautiful perfume, beautiful white floral, makes me so happy, positive, positive vibes, just wonderful fragrance. So the third one uh, is another floral accord, but very ambery at the same time. And strangely, I caught myself the other day sniffing it <laughs> because I, I don't know, I had one of those weird moments, something bad happened, and I just kind of instinctively went to this perfume, grabbed it and sniffed on it from the bottom. I didn't spray it on. I just needed to smell the smell of it. And it made me feel good. It's almost like a honey, ambery accord, but it's also floral accord. And that would be L'Instant de Guerlain, believe it or not, in the Eau de Toilette concentration. Okay, this one is not a cheapie, but it's also not niche. So we can still 
you know, we can get a bottle smaller, I don't know, around the $50 mark, $60, depending how big it is, how small it is. But uh, L'Instant de Guerlain is a beautiful perfume. Um, it is a powdery, floral, ambery, to my nose, honeyed accord of happiness. And usually I say that Guerlain perfumes deliver a sort of depression with them. This one doesn't. Th this one is, you know what? I'm going to layer it with a Dolce Gabbana. I don't care. <laughs> We're just going to... Oh, man, it's a beauty. It's like a buttery... It's a rich, textured, buttery, honeyed amber accord with vanilla, with a ton of vanilla. That's why the juice starts getting darker with, you know, the older it gets, the darker it turns because the vanilla oxidizes. It's a beautiful, slightly indolic uh, guerlinade going on in here. And... Oh... It's like a clean shampoo from a very, very, very bougie beauty salon and you just feel pampered and you feel like, you know what, you, you can love yourself again. You can hug yourself again. You can embrace yourself again. It's a really good perfume to pick up the mood when you're feeling down. This one really helps you break out of that woe is me, woe is me, you know, type of chain lock, that grip lock that we have on ourselves sometimes. You know what I'm talking about when you go into that depressive state and you're just like, oh, no matter what I don't, poor me, poor me. This one kind of snaps you out of it. This is the share moment in, in Moonstruck, you know, snap out of it. It gives you that little slap. Uh, so <sighs> beautiful, 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 really great one to a pick me upper. L'instant de Guerlain, I have the auto toilet concentration. Next one is literally happiness and flirtations in a bottle. Again, we're back to our tuberose, we're back to our white florals, but they are powdery and they are flirty and they are from the 80s and they do have a bit of a shoulder pad going on. Gorgeous lipstick, beautifully faded uh, airbrushed makeup, the hair is flowing and you just feel like You've been struggling, but you will make it through the day. You're going to make it to the other side. And there's sunshine on the other side. Okay. And that would be Lulu by Cacharel. This is a gorgeous uh, fragrance that I adore in the current formulation, one of those rare instances of beautiful reformulations. My gosh, is this thing beautiful. And uh, it matches kind of my makeup today. That kind of, this and my eye makeup are the same. I just kind of blended out the makeup a little bit more. But we have that purpley reddish mahogany type of color like we got here, blood red. Mm, Joyful Remorse says in the chats, I have this because of you and no regrets. I love how it smells. This is also a cheapie nowadays. You can get the smaller bottles like the 15 mil. This is, um, yeah, the 15 mil or no, this is a 30 mil. You can get a 30 mil for about $12, $15, depending where you look for it. But this is not one of the perfumes that breaks the bank. So this one does fall under the cheapy category. However, uh, this is definitely is a mood booster. It is such a beautiful, beautiful, positive mood booster. I mean, it's sophisticated, it's elegant, but it's happy. The most important thing is that it's happy. And if you've been down and you need a little bit of um, kind of almost like a time travel machine to the 80s, to the best of the 80s, you smell this. It does make you a little bit nostalgic, perhaps, because you do remember the good old times. But because it still exists, it makes you feel great because they still make it. It's still in production. And you can still own a piece of that memory. Uh, and every time that memory is reignited for me, I get happy. You know, I get an endorphin kick. 
my happy hormones kick in and I'm just like super, super happy. So, ah, love it. Love it to bits. Lulu by Kasharel. Another one of those that is, uh, you know, on the affordable side for, uh, for affordable happiness. So, now, on the other side of the spectrum, there is a beautiful, again, white floral uh, niche. This one is hardcore niche, and I love it to bits. And a lot of you who follow me since a while know that, um, you know, I, I, I experiment with, with niche. But there's only a few niches that I really, really adore. This being really a high up there. It's just a beautiful jasmine, white floral, gardeniesque musk. Fleur Burlesque by Wilhelm Parfumery. I know I speak about this one a lot, and it's in a lot of my lists. Pierre Dinan designed the bottle, the same guy who designed Opium. I, I just, uh, this is sunshine in a bottle. I'm always so happy when I smell this perfume. Oh my God, are we going to layer this on top? Yeah, we are. We're going to, but I'm going to spray it here on this. There you go. Just a little bit here. Oh my gosh. Oh, it, it's sweet. It's fruity. It's white floral. It's on the verge of rotting fruits, but it's so ambery and ambrosial at the same time. Oh man, it is suntan lotion blended in with pulpy, meaty, fleshy, white floral imbued musks. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful and it really, really peps up my mood. It is such a positive vibes mood booster. I cannot tell you. This is happiness in a bottle and uh, particularly good and helpful in the evenings if you're feeling down. You know, the sun has set and you're kind of in a mood and about to go to bed do just one spray of this on your chest lower chest area right and then put your pjs on or not whatever you do uh and go to bed with it just one spray it's gonna create such a relaxing positive aura around you i love it love it to bits such a happiness boost the next one is a rare instance of a green accord uh, within this selection, because most of them are either this kind of, if I would combine color with mood boosters in terms of fragrances, I would say most of them are in that yellow white floral spectrum. And also like a powdery lilac -y, reddish accord like those are the colors of happy perfumes for me right but there's one instance of a green perfume that is also completely happiness in a bottle like it's just such a mood booster and it's such a cheapy you get a hundred mil bottle i got the eau de parfum here also for around twelve dollars to fifteen dollars for a hundred mil like 3.4 ounces that's a really good price, and uh, that would be Cabotine. It's all green with the green screen. You can't even see it, <laughs> but you can see at least the juice. So it's uh, Madame Gré or Cabotine de Gré. It has a green floral tiger uh, lily uh, stopper, which is invisible when you do this with it. There you go. Oh, my gosh. My finger is shorter all of a sudden because I put the cap on it. This is so creepy. Okay, anyway. This is such a happy, happy perfume. Um, such a happy perfume. Audrey says, this is my favorite. It's my work perfume. And it's interesting, Audrey, that you mentioned that you use this one at work uh, because you ha I, I, you guys, I'm, you know, we're, we're all, we, we keep it very discreet in the fragrant bunker, but... So I'm not going to disclose what job Audrey has, but I know what job Audrey has. And Audrey, in Audrey's line of work, um, wearing a perfume 
that actually calms you down and but gives you that zesty energy to keep going at the same time while keeping your cool, your professionalism, that's a rare trait. It's rare to find a perfume like that. But Cabotin does exactly that. It grounds you in a positive way. It allows you to move forward despite the difficult circumstances and uh, no matter how hard the work environment is, you, you plow your way through elegantly and graciously while Cabotin giving you that boost needed to stay positive and optimistic. This is, in fact, an optimistic fragrance, not only because of the way it smells, this beautiful kind of fresh, modern, albeit synthetic, but 90s synthetic green accord. Also, the story behind this perfume is very poetic and beautiful because they were on a really big budget. And uh, Madame Grey was not doing very well, while well, the brand wasn't doing very well. But they really wanted to create a Cabocha follow-up to Cabocha, which is the most famous perfume from Grey. And Cabotine is like the little sister of Cabocha, made on a budget, using for the first time ever extracted synthetic compounds to mimic uh, the Himala he of the Himalayan, uh, the Himalayan uh, ginger lily also called the tiger lily. But the ginger lily is a little tiny flower that, that grows in the Himalayas really high up, and it's very hard to harvest it because it lives a very short amount of time, and it's very high up there, and people can, you know, perish trying to, to harvest enough of these to create, a fl uh, to create uh, perfume. But in the early 90s, somebody managed to extrapolate the formula for it for the ginger lily. And for the first time ever, the ginger lily was utilized in a perfume, and that would be Cabotin. On a budget, beautiful perfume. Beautiful, really. Hopeful. It also shows us that even with a small budget, you can achieve greatness. And in, in fact, it's also a cheapie. So there you go. The next perfume is a relatively new one. I want to say from this entire list thus far, the newest launch in the world of fragrances. And it is available in smaller bottles, bigger bottles, giant bottles. It is a Cologne concentration, but it is really happiness in a bottle. Makes me so happy to smell it anytime. And that would be a Hermes fragrance. And that would be... Another green one, which is invisible to see with a green screen, but it is uh, Eau du Basilic Pourpre. Oh my God. Purple Basil or Basilicum or Basilico. I mean, Basilicum in Latin, Basilico in Italian, Basil, Basil in English. But there's a purple version, which is much more aromatic and it is purple in color. I mean, it's like a green purple texture. It's a beautiful powdery green accord that goes more into purple than green, actually. It's kind of like how purple would smell, but fresh, zesty, invigorating, citrusy almost, lemony in a way. Well, let's layer it. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is... A... Yeah, sure, it works as a layering a concoction. It's almost like... Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful, fresh smelling. It is, a, it, it's a herbal, almost medicinal, like a tisane, like a tea type of accord, but mm, not like green tea or black tea. Uh, it's more of a plant-based, like, you know, like if you can make a tea out of sage or basil or... Uh, um, rosemary, uh, you know, it's that type of tea vibe. It's very medicinal and healing, and it smells of healing properties. <laughs> really beautiful, really, really beautiful, happy, sophisticated, the top-notch ingredients. People complain about this one, saying that it has very low longevity. Not in my case. I... You know, sure, it, it's, listen, it's a cologne. It's supposed to be something you, you keep spraying over and over and over again, and you keep enjoying it, right? But 
it doesn't it it doesn't last only two minutes you know it, it, I get a couple of hours out of this and it's a beautiful dry down as well and it stays sophisticated from beginning to end it stays positive and invigorating from beginning to end and then you respray if you want a little fresh zesty reliving the moment right and it's a happy perfume it's a very happy even more so happy and healthy smelling perfume you know so it smells of like healthy happiness beautiful beautiful pick me up if you're feeling down however very important to note with this one I would avoid spraying this one on if you're hungry. So if you have that, if you're like hangry, like hungry, angry, eat something, take a bite of, eat a little bit of something first and then spray on Eau de Basilic Pauvre. Don't wear this on an empty stomach though. Just only note. The next one is... Um, another cheapy. <laughs> so you can find it at a really, really, really affordable price today. But it is uh, my mom's favorite perfume, by the way. It is another white floral. Again, we got gardenia. We got some tuberose in there, jasmine. We got some musks. We got civet in the original formula. In the reformulated version, there is no more real civet in there. But it's still beautiful. If you can hunt down the latest formula which was made in France, not the ones made in Spain after. And that would be an 80s powerhouse, the love of my life, literally sunshine in a bottle. It's Giorgio Beverly Hills. This perfume is just... Yeah. Beautiful, really, really, really beautiful. And if it's if it kind of on some skins it develops a bit heavier, whatever. You know, if you can find a bottle for $20 or $15, just get it to sniff it. If you don't want to spray it on your skin because it becomes a little bit overpowering for some, just sniffing it out of the bottle is enough just to make you happy. <laughs> you know, it really it's such a happiness boost for me. Yeah, Jesus says, happiest smell ever in the chats. Debbie's, Han says, when, it's shining, says yeah, Georgia Beverly Hills, 100%. Han says, everybody agrees. Yeah, this is, oh my gosh. And the memories it brings with it and the beautiful movies from the 80s where the characters would have this on their nightstand in some shot the ad campaigns were the most beautiful, leger, easy living, easy life, enjoying life type of vibes. It's really, really cool. Yeah, it's just happiness in a bottle. Seriously, happiness in a bottle. This thing really helped me get through a lot of things, a lot of shitty situations in life, just like sniffing this out of the bottle. Also because it makes me think of my mom, but also because on its own, the perfume is just, it's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece of a fragrance. Seriously, a masterpiece. Number nine is the most expensive of all of these, uh, but it had to, it, I had to also bring it in because uh, it is the most giving and the most generous of all Chanel fragrances. And yes, we were missing a Chanel in this selection. And you know, I love my Chanel perfumes. But I thought, you know, let's not overdo it with all the expensive Chanel's. I can allow myself only one for happiness. And if it had to be only one for happiness, it would have to be Gardenia, you guys. Shocking. <laughs> this is like 22. No, it's Gardenia. Not for nothing, they call this the wedding fragrance. It's not necessarily the perfume I would choose for a wedding wedding, but the fact that it is a wedding perfume means that... Um, again, a white floral. 
It's a gardenia based perfume. It is very, very um, milky. It's almost as if you could, which you can't, but imagine turning the garden the white gardenia into a lotion or a milk that is drinkable, which it's not. But if you would turn it into a milk substance and that milk would have a smell, it would be gardenia. Now, if you overspray it, you go into that green poisonous smell of gardenia, which gardenia can also have. And uh, Debbie says, I'll take DDT. Just says EDP is better. Yes, I prefer the EDP as well. But you could also do the pure extrait, which is also amazing. Right, Jesus. Green, white, floral milk or green milk, says Debs. This one is a soothing, cradling fragrance. Okay, if you go to bed with it, perfection. Waking up in the morning to this, wearing it before you leave the house perfection. It's going to just surround you with an aura of peace, serenity, tranquility, but just enough zest through that floral, spicy, it's not spicy, um, through that floral. Well, you see, I say spicy because there's a green note in here as well. So it's like a powdery, floral, milky accord with a hint of green, and if you overspray it, you get a lot of that green, poisonous smell of the gardenia, which in my nose translates to spicy, even though there's no spices in here. But the effect is of zest slash spice, you know, delivering the vibe of gardenia. It's just amazing. And it is happiness in a bottle. For sure. Like if you're going to have, you know, that one energy booster, positive optimism booster from Chanel, and you're on that budget that allows you just that one special Chanel, a pick-me-upper special Chanel gardenia, hands down. Just saying. Now we get to the final one, number 10. The 10th fragrance is very delicate and special. The 10th fragrance is not here. I don't have the 10th fragrance. Why do I not have the 10th fragrance? I don't have the 10th fragrance because there's that one happy place that all of us go to as like the last resort when we are feeling really down, sad for whatever reason, beat up, and for every one of us, that smell is different. So my tip for you as a pick-me-upper perfume, the 10th the perfume would be the one that you remember the most from your childhood, from your growing up years. We always kind of instinctively, I've noticed this with myself, we resort to dialing it back, jumping back into time, and we have a memory of, of a smell. You know, we don't just have memories of situations playing out in our heads or memories of like we remember a song we like a lot or a movie or a poem. But we also have flashbacks of smells. And to each one of us, it's different. It could be the smell of a cookie that you're dunking into warm milk or tea, or the smell of fresh brewed coffee early in the morning that your parents used to brew every morning, way before you were even allowed to drink coffee. The memory of fresh baked bread, the smell of the bread, or the memory of a, of a new toy you got when you were little, and new toys always also have that particular plasticky smell, which can also be a good memory. So I'm leaving number 10 open for you to think about that smell that brings you joy and happiness. What would that smell be? And if you've made it this far into the video, uh, in the comment section down below, 
let us know what would be the furthest back into memory smell that you remember, the, as far back as you can go, that you remember your happiness being associated to, in terms of your happiness being connected to a certain smell in your memory, what would that smell be? It doesn't have to be a brand perfume. It can be, like I said, food. It can be the smell of your parents. It can be, you know, just the smell of their own body oils, all sorts of things. Let me know that the memory smell of happiness. Let me know your memory smell of happiness down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thumb it up if you have enjoyed it. It's been one heck of a week for me. So this video has helped me also quite a bit. Just kind of re reset my positive vibes. So it's been very cathartic for me to do this video. Uh, it's been very healing uh, for me to do this video. So thank you so much for staying with me uh, during this process. And uh, subscribe. Bye.